We're going to start off this video by looking at something called a Lewis structure or a Lewis diagram. And they are diagrams that show the number of valence electrons that an atom actually has. So recall from the bohr rutherford diagrams uh, that we would have drawn in a previous lesson that a shortcut for this is the group number that the element in is going to tell you how many valence electrons that that atom has. So some examples. If we're looking at lithium that is in group one, it has one valence electron. You can draw it as a dot, an X, a heart, a triangle, whatever you want. I'm going to draw this one as a dot. Uh, the next one in group two we'll do is calcium and so it's group two so it has two valence electrons so I'm going to draw them top bottom. Electrons are negatively charged, they're repelling each other so we're going to draw them as far away as we can. Aluminum is in group three, it has three valence electrons, notice they are again not together. Carbon's in group four, so it will have four valence electrons. Now something a little unusual is going to happen here when we get to group 5, which is called nitrogen, or nitrogen's an example. We're going to put our 4 in, and then when we go to do our fifth one, we're going to pair it up. So we have something here that's called a lone pair. Lone pairs are very stable. In fact, this is sort of the goal of all atoms, is they want to have a bunch of lone pairs. You'll notice that all the ones we did previous to this, there were no lone pairs, which means those ones aren't really happy with themselves. And as well, too, this one has three spots where lone pairs don't exist, so those spots are not exactly happy either. Now as we move on to group six, we look at sulfur, and when we put this one together, you'll notice that we have two lone pairs, and iodine is in group seven, and when you put all these ones around, you'll notice that we have three lone pairs. And when we get to group eight, argon's an example, and it has a full uh, eight valence electrons. Then, So this is the goal. So this argon here is very stable. In fact, out of the eight we just looked at, this is the only one that's going to be stable, and it's just going to stay as is. So we're going to have to do some work with the other atoms here that we've looked at. So what's going to guide us is something called the octet rule. So when we're looking at stability of ions, uh, the octet rule states that either atoms are only stable, whether they have zero valence electrons or eight valence electrons. And as we just discussed, that out of the ones we just drew, only that very last one, the argon, was the only one that uh, was actually happy and stable. And so the rest of them are going to have to do something to become stable. And what that thing is, is they're either going to have to gain electrons from somewhere or lose electrons to become stable. <coughs> so let's start with some metals. And let's pick one from group one. Let's go with lithium. So it has, uh, it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. So we know this, that uh, this is not stable right now. It's not following the octet rule. So how are we going to get this down to eight or up, uh, down to zero or up to eight. Well, the move's gonna be either, this one's gonna lose one or gain seven, and we're always gonna go with the lowest number. So lithium is going to lose one valence electron. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that electron away. It's now free flying around somewhere, but lithium has lost something that's negative. So its overall charge has gone from being neutral, it's lost something that's negative, and that means there are more positives that remain in the atom. So it has a charge of positive one. And then we'll also write that one electron. So that one is in fact that one. So what we've discovered is we've discovered lithium stable charge is plus one. In fact, that applies to all the group one elements. All of their stable charges are going to be plus one. When we get to group two, we already looked at calcium. It's got two valence electrons. So what calcium is going to do is lose two, gain six. Well, it's going to lose two. So if it loses two negatives, it's going to have an overall charge of plus two. And then there are those two electrons. And group three is the last one we'll look at here, aluminum. And so you might have already jumped to the conclusion that this aluminum is going to kick those three off. It's going to have a charge, overall charge of plus three. And we've got our three electrons. So we've actually made a discovery here because remember, these are all metals. So we have discovered that metals will lose valence electrons to become positive, stable ions. And the fancy name for a stable, positive ion is a cation. Looks like a big T, looks like a plus sign. That's how I remember cations are positive. So that's just half the story. Our periodic table also has a bunch of non-metals on it. So let's uh, look at those two. 
actually, before we get to that, I should mention that you can actually find these stable charges on the periodic table. So there was lithium, it has plus one. There's sodium, it has a plus one. Potassium has plus one. Beryllium plus two. Aluminum plus three. These ones in the middle here, they have a couple of positive charge, charges to them. We'll explain those in a future lesson. So you can see that our metals, they all have positive charges to them. And if you want to know what it is, you just look it up on the periodic table. So now onto the non-metals here. Now we're going to ignore group eight because those ones are stable. They don't want to gain or lose. They're already happy. So we'll look at something from group uh, seven, which is chlorine. And this one is at seven. So to get up to eight, it just wants to gain one electron from somewhere. So we're going to draw this one. Well, we'll do something a little different here. We'll draw our chlorine in. And now we're going to use a different symbol to represent this one electron here. And now since we've added an electron to this chlorine, we have an overall charge of negative one. So that is chlorine's stable charge. It is minus one. Group six, like sulfur, it has six valence electrons. So we kind of have two spots to put things in right there and there. So we're going to add two electrons. And when we do that, we'll have an overall charge of minus two. And when we get to group five, we've got our nitrogen. So now we have three spots to put uh, some electrons. So we'll add three electrons in. And there we go. And if we've added in three negatives, that means we have an overall charge of minus three. And we have made a discovery again. We have discovered that nonmetals are going to gain valence electrons to become stable negative uh, ions or anions. So if you think about it, metals are losing, nonmetals are gaining. So they're going to go together and make a, a nice match. And again, on our periodic table here, you can see that for our nonmetals, we've got fluorine at minus one, chlorine at minus one, bromine, iodine. There's oxygen, there's sulfur, selenium, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sometimes carbon. These are really all the only nonmetals we're going to use uh, in our early examples here.